Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to Deal to Heal Teas dot myshopify.com that's deal to heal teas get some inspiration in your situation wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day that's deal to heal teas at deal to heal teas dot myshopify.com Hi guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you'll enjoy the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James. And on my podcast, my guests and I discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with their problems, Heal from the pain and to fulfill their purpose. So check out our podcast. We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or even on Audible. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel at Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. Until then, see you soon. Welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with E. James. We believe that the relationship between a dad and daughter is one of the most important relationships in a woman's life. Our mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world and give love and support to all of our dads and their daughters. Let's get to it. Let's tune in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe that the relationship between a dad and a daughter is one of the most important relationships in a young lady's life. And therefore, our mission is to to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world in order to combat the narrative of the absent father and the fatherless daughter. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you listen, like, subscribe, and share our podcast on all of our social media pages uh, and also at the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. And make sure that you guys check us out at our new uh, YouTube channel, which is the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network. Again, that's the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network um, because now we are bringing you more uh, than just one podcast. So when you go to our YouTube channel at the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network, you will find uh, the Girl Dad Discussions podcast there, which you're listening to now. And you'll also find the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, uh, which is our partner podcast. On that podcast, we talk about ways to help us to heal in every era of our lives. So make sure you guys are going there to check us out. Again, that's uh, the Deal to Heal podcasting network. Make sure you guys go in there to check us out, um, to check out our podcast. So also our product of the week, as you guys know, we are a self-sustained podcast. And the way that we uh, keep ourselves on the air is by bringing you amazing products in order for you to purchase. So our product of the week is our Motivate um, t-shirt, which comes to you from our uh, website at Deal to Heal Tees. That's Deal, the number two Heal Tees. Our Motivate shirt, which is a black shirt with the word Motivate on the front. Uh, with the letters that spell out move, M-O-V-E, inside of that, uh, which I stand out in red. So for those of you that are describing it for you, those of you who might not be watching, but you may be listening, again, you can go to deal, the number two, healtees.com, deal to healtees.com, and check out our product of the week, which is our Motivate uh, T-shirt. So today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guest, Mr. J, how you doing? 
Dude, I'm so good. I'm blessed to be here. Really grateful to be here. Grateful to talk about being a girl dad with you today. Um, and just excited. Also, I love that shirt, by the way. I think it's really cool. Um, you didn't mention that I have some cool writing on the back, too. Um, and I love the symbolism of that shirt, too. Uh, just to mention that here at the top. Because if you know, if you've read the Bible and how that's inspired there, the words in red always are come off the page a little bit stronger. Um, so I love the symbolism of that shirt there. And I love what the message of that in uh, and yeah, so I just wanted to shout that out too. But yeah, no, I'm super excited to be here. Super excited to have this conversation with you. And uh, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. So first of all, uh, thank you for that. Um, I didn't even recognize that. So that, that's cool that you've seen that. I designed it, but I didn't even think about think about that uh, with the letters in red. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Also, I want to say thank you just for being here and for being a part um, because you could have been doing anything else with anyone else, but you're here uh, with me and my listeners, and I definitely appreciate it. So we're going to jump uh, right in uh, with my first question to get us started, Jay, is what does it mean uh, to you personally to be a girl dad? So it means everything. I absolutely love having daughters. I have two daughters. Um, I became a dad when I was 22 years old, and so I became a dad really young. Um, and becoming a girl dad was probably the best blessing that God ever did in my life. Um, honestly, I don't think I would be nearly the person I am. I don't think I would care nearly as much about the things I care about as much as I care about them. I don't think I would be as motivated, work as hard as I do. Well, I might still do that, but I might have like other motives and whatnot for doing different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the motivation, the, the dedication, the, just the overall just meaning and purpose that it gives to your life to raise daughters. It's a very special gift um, to be blessed with, with not just one, but two daughters um, like myself and to be able to raise them and to see them grow and develop and to be a part of their lives and active part of their lives is just something that I always wanted, but I always wanted like one son, one daughter, you know, and having two daughters definitely threw a wrench into that plan or that idea of a plan that I'll have, but you know, it's, it's never my, what I want. It's always what, what he, what, what God wants. And so he wanted me to have two, two beautiful daughters. They're absolutely amazing. And you know, I would, I wouldn't be the same if I had sons. I think I would still be kind of reckless and kind of whatever. And yeah. um, a little bit more rough around the edges, a little bit more rough and rugged. And um, you know, I was just not as disciplined. Cause I feel like raising daughters, you have to have an amount of discipline. And you have to, because your discipline is what's going to set them up. For success, right. Right? So your discipline as a dad, you have to be disciplined and you have to set that example. Uh, and in the areas that you want them to follow that example in. Yeah. And girls, girls are smart, right? They're not as much of a, uh, they don't really live by the model, do what I say, but not as I do. They're going to take what you say and they're going to do as you do kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Versus a boy is just going to, oh, okay, I'll do what you do. Um, I'll do what you say, kind of thing. So we're simple-minded creatures, but yeah. So being a girl dad, it's absolutely my favorite thing. So. Yeah, and I, and I love what you said, and I and I share the story uh, uh, often on here. Uh, we're having a conversation with with one dad, and he was saying, you know, just as a lot of us say that we want we want a son, right? And so, but he was even to go back to exactly what you were saying um, that. It was because he had a daughter that he began to change for the better because he knows that if he had a son with some of the places that he was going and some of the things that he was involved in, you know, to have a son, to have a mini me, you know, he would have took his son everywhere with him and, you know, kind of exposed his son to that same lifestyle. But when he had a daughter, he was faced with the thought of, I don't want to take my daughter into some of these spaces that that he was currently going. And so even just by having a daughter, he began to change because now he was like, okay, I'm not taking my daughter to those spaces. And so little by little, he stopped even going to those spaces, you know? And so it will begin to change him for the better. And so I oftentimes say that, you know, even though sometimes we want girls, God has a different, you know, a different uh, goal that he wants to accomplish in us. And there are some changes mm -hmm. in us that he wants to make that he knows by giving us a daughter, will automatically make those changes, you know, because yeah. again, there's some environments and there's some things that 
we don't want to expose our daughters to. And there are some environments that may not even be good for our sons, but because our sons are, are young versions of us, you know, we'll be still kind of uh, willing to expose them to those spaces because they're mm -hmm. like, hey, if I can do it, then he can do it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes God does that to, to, to change us, right? <laughs> exactly. So let, let's go back. You you mentioned about um, becoming a dad young, and you said 22. I don't really think 22 is young <laughs> as far as to become a dad, um, because I know a couple of people that's like teenagers, you know, it's our oh, yeah. 18, 19. I think that's young. 22, yeah. you know, you're 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 over 21. So, you know, I mean, maybe I early, say, but not necessarily young. I would say anything under 25 for men is considered young. Uh, just because, you know, our brain's not even fully developed until we're 25. Mm -hmm. And so our brain not being fully developed and then trying to raise a child in that at the same time is incredibly complicated. And just the odds are not in your favor. You're still so young, you know, you don't you don't have a lot of life experience at that point, or maybe you have a lot, but maybe it's not the right kind of life experience, but again, life experience is life experience. Um, and so for me, you know, I consider 22 young, because, uh, you know, I barely had hair on my face at 22, right. and so it's just, uh, and some, some people start younger, some of that's, you know, by choice, or maybe by accident, or maybe by, maybe by mistake, and you know, that's okay too. To whatever situation that you're in but you know however however the cookie crumbles the cookie crumbles it's meant to happen when it's meant to happen for a reason you know right and and i do now, now that i'm thinking about it for for the for the thought of raising a family yeah definitely 22 would definitely be young in that case <laughs> but the responsibility of, of being a father and and having a child and starting a family, yes, 22 will be, yeah. will be young. Um, yeah, because the average age in America is 30.9 years old. So, mm. and then in like Japan and Vietnam and Asian, in Asian America and like within Asian culture, you know, the average is like 36 years old. So in context, it's, it's rather, uh, it's rather young compared to, you know, about 40 years ago when the average age was 27.4 years old. And so we're having kids later and later in life, same for men, same for women, uh, as we see over the last, you know, 40 years or so, that change and that shift. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, when your, when your daughter, when you found out you were going to be a, first, let's go back. How did you find out that you were going to be a dad? Uh, so my wife at the time had, she told me, uh, she surprised me with something. I don't remember what it was. We're divorced now, so I don't remember a lot from that marriage. But uh, she surprised me with like the test and something, and it was something something small. And um, I think I just reacted. I was shocked, um, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really like a surprise because like it was it was in the plans more or less. Right, right. Or for kind of where we were at, what we were wanting. So it was it wasn't like unplanned. Um, but it happened rather quickly. I remember at the time my ex-wife, she was on birth control and we had just barely gotten off birth control. Um, and then it was like, boom, pregnant, like right away kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it just, that's just how I shook out, you know? Um, and yes, I don't, I don't really remember my initial reaction. I'm pretty sure I was nervous, scared. Uh, I remember I called my dad. The part I do remember is I remember I called my dad, um, and he, was not the most supportive uh, at first when I told him he was going to be a grandfather, and he was very shocked. He, um, mm -hmm. I remember he absolutely loves his granddaughters, absolutely loves them so much. Um, he's an amazing grandpa, like absolutely amazing. Like I will give that man his roses. He is a fantastic grandfather. And whenever he visits, the kids are all literally all over him. Um, they love talking to him on the phone. They love talking to him and catching up with them. Like I absolutely love seeing my dad as grandpa. He was meant to be a grandpa. Um, but you know, my dad became a grandpa at freaking 40. Hold on. It was at 40, like 43 years old, mm -hmm. 43, 44 years old. And so that's kind of some shock there. Cause there's some men that are just having kids at 44. 
um, yeah. let alone having grandkids. But he had us when he was super young. Like him and I are 21 years apart. Him and his mom are 21 years apart. And so, you know, my older sister, he had my older sister when he was 18. And so we, it was a theme in our family, have kids young. Um, I'm hoping my daughters break that cycle unless that's what they want. That's where they're at their stage of life. Great. I'll be supportive. Um, but maybe let's break that, you know, consistency of 21, 22 years apart a little bit. Just throw some mix into there. But um, regardless, his reaction was pretty negative. It's like, I told you not to have kids. I told you not to get a pregnant. You know, kind of this visceral knee-jerk reaction. Uh, we laugh about it now. I still give him crap for it. But it was just it was just one of those things. And then he ends up, you know, coming out. I remember um, us putting together the crib. Uh, he came and bought and um, help me put it together and I'm pretty sure we put it together wrong like twice and you know so it made some great memories doing that and you know it's those 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 replayed you know taking down the crib for the last time and with my older with my younger daughter and you know when she transitioned and things like that so those are the things that I really remember about becoming a dad and whatnot so and I still have the the bracelet that it's a girl bracelet from when we found out we were having a girl um, I still wear it on my wrist every day she's seven and a half years old now so yeah 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 so how did you how did you guys you, guys said you, you uh you wear the bracelet so how was the experience of finding out uh the gender did you guys wait uh or did you guys have like a gender reveal party or something of that nature no at the time we were pretty isolated from like family and whatnot so we weren't really close enough to do anything like that um we kind of just found out the gender of the doctor and you know one of those things so okay okay and so um you mentioned um you know uh you're not married now uh um, i am yeah. i'm remarried now well remarried but you're not married yeah. to your daughter's mom oh correct yeah right. correct, so yeah. um how how has the journey been uh to co-parent right and so uh, even in my own story, um, I've been married twice. And my first marriage um, was uh, produced my daughter and definitely going through the divorce and that, that you know, time of it. Um, but then having to co-parent and learning how to work together, you know, either even on, you know, scheduling and especially after they moved to another state. Um, then it really, the schedule really became, you know, how are we going to do this? Visit in the summertime, you know, things of that nature um, that we were able to work through um, to the best of our knowledge at, at that time. So just as a, in a co-parenting space as a dad, you know, how has that been for you? You know, it's, it's had its up and down. Um, it's some, some, some stretches are, are good. Some stretches are not so good. Uh, um, yeah. You know, being quite honest, quite direct in direct, direct in that, and you know that's just the way it is. Some days, sometimes there some stretches there. There's a really good stretch, and then something happens, and it throws it off, and it's less than ideal, way less than ideal. And yeah. so there's those ups and downs. There's the struggles. Um, sometimes it's really great. Sometimes it's it's not so great, and yeah. You kind of just gotta ebb and flow as it ebbs and flows. And you just gotta keep it, you just gotta do your best to keep it about about the kids, you know, right. and yeah. focus on the children, focus on the mission of, you know, the children at the end of the day. That's what's most important, like yeah. without a doubt. Uh, when people make it about themselves, mothers or fathers end up making it about themselves, that's where and when issues start to happen. Uh, and when you can't, when you lose sight of what you're actually trying to do, you yeah. you lose sight of that. You lose sight of what's important. You lose sight of, oh, I'm supposed to be, you know, keeping this about the kids, but I'm going to make it about myself. I'm going to give her a reaction or I'm going to react to her reaction that I gave her kind of thing. Or I'm going to try to cause a reaction, start some shit, start some bullshit kind of thing. Um, if, you, if you say to me that you don't know that you're, you're starting shit, you're lying. You know when you're starting shit and you know when you're not. Um, Everyone knows it's a choice that everyone makes. It's called choice theory. You always have a choice to to start shit or not start shit. Um, that that's completely up to you. And excuse part of my language there. Um, but co-parenting's hard. It can be really yeah. difficult. Uh, some situations are more difficult. Some are easier. Every situation is different. And so my situation is 
probably one of the easier ones. And I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful for that. Um, most days. Sometimes, some days, she's a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to be 100% there. She's never going to listen to this, so I can say whatever I want. And <laughs> so sometimes it's really difficult. But at the same time, like, I have to remember that it's about the kids. I have to remember that it's about the children and about their needs and what they need and how they need it uh, more so than about me. And that's the important part here, having to put yourself to the side and, you know, just kind of keep it brief, informative, formal, and keep it short and transactional. And, and yeah, so... Yeah, and and I and and you you hit it right on the on the head, and that's a conversation that I have a lot uh, with dads, um, and and even stepdads, because I've been I've been a stepdad myself also. Is just making sure that it's a, it's about the children. You know what I mean? If we can keep that in mind, that you know, making sure that we do what we need to do for the kids, and realizing that it's about the kids, it's about our daughters, making sure that we do our parts as parents for what's in the best interest of the child. Um, and so definitely knowing that, that it kind of helped things. If we can remember that and hold that in high regards, it kind of will work itself out through a lot of the things that we, uh, disagreements or misunderstandings and things of that nature will kind of work themselves out, uh, if we can do that. Um, so let's, let's go back a little bit. You know, um, you mentioned that your, your daughter's like seven and a half years old now, but how was that original experience for you? We bring her home for the first time, and and you said you have two daughters. So tell us a little bit about your your second daughter. So my my second child is the second child. Um, if everyone, if you know, you know. Uh, second child is usually a little Tasmanian devil, Nigel Thornberry kind of kind of vibes. Um, for some reason, second children are just feral. Don't know why. Second daughter just feral. Uh, my first, my oldest daughter, goody two shoes. My youngest daughter is the life of the party. Um, in all the good ways and all the bad ways. And, you know, I have one kid that's very easy to shop for, for Christmas, for gifts, things like that. And that's my older daughter. She's very disciplined, very routine, very, like, not like strict, but very, like, knows what she likes, knows what she doesn't like, and has her interests and doesn't have her interests. Like, her interests are small, set, defined, and, you know, loves those, she loves those things. My other daughter, though, has, like, a bunch of interests, but no interests. And, has like no reaction to things, but also really big reactions to things at the same time. And her, she's just, she's all over the place. She's just wild. Uh, she's a lot of fun though um, at times, but not when she, let me just say this, this will kind of describe it. My older daughter, I've never had an issue with her preschool and in grade school at all, zero issue at all. My daughter's in preschool for the first year, my younger one this year. She has lost scissor privileges at school. <laughs> Lost scissor privileges. We have had to sew multiple shirts back together. Hmm. And yeah, let's just say, yeah, that's the best way to describe the two of them. <laughs> um, but I love them both. They both bring such a uniqueness to to the dynamics of everything. And they're both just a ton of fun and uh, amazing in, in their own ways. And just, just so just incredible. And um, again, I'm just so grateful that I have both of them and that I get to call both of my daughters and they call me dad and it's just, it's just a great thing. So. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. So one of the things that I know as being a dad is that we're always, you know, pouring into our daughters. We're always, you know, advising and, and growing and, you know, just uh, pouring into them as, as young women to become, you know, the kind of, the kind of uh, person we can be proud of. Right. Um, but one of the things that I also know about that is while we're teaching them and while we're, uh, pouring into them, they're also pouring into us. So Absolutely. what would be something that you can tell me um, that even on this journey that your daughters have taught you? Um, not to take stuff so serious, you know. It's really not that serious. It's really not that deep. It's really nothing that you need to be, like, overly serious about, you know. Like, let's learn to laugh it off. Let's learn to just let it roll off our shoulders not take it too serious and just move on and uh, laugh about it or kind of thing. And just, you know, to, to do that more and also to just be present, you know, and just to be like in the moment um, and then just enjoy, enjoy the little things and to just enjoy, 
enjoy life, really, because kids just enjoy life. You know, they just enjoy life. Um, it's all they're about. They just enjoy every day. And they find fun in the simple things, and they take more pleasure in a free box that the Amazon package came in versus the actual $50 toy that's in the box. <laughs> and so just, you know, appreciating the simple and not getting too caught up in all the rest. Um, and yeah, just, just focusing on the simple and enjoying the simplicity of life that it is. So. Yes, yes, yes. So um, for, before we get out of here, I, I want to talk about two things uh, that you've done. Uh, one of them is uh, the Young Dad podcast that you have because you are, are a fellow podcaster. So tell us a little bit about uh, your podcast and your podcast journey. How has that been for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I started podcasting about two and a half years ago or so. And it really was to to try to get out of this like creative slump that I was in after my divorce. Um, I was probably in a creative slump for about a year, year, almost two years. And I was just like, man, I don't, I want to get behind the mic again. I was doing like a sports podcast. I was starting to, you know, do some, make, get some traction and was like, I was really excited. I had a lot of fun. My divorce happened. I just lost all motivation to be creative. And I just knew I needed like a creative outlet. And one day I'm sitting at my, sitting at my desk job at a bank. Um, and then all of a sudden the idea for the podcast has come. Um, been thinking about it, trying to think about it, trying to, you know, get this idea. And it's like, I need this idea. Like, I want this idea. I want to do this. But like, I don't know what I want to do. I mean, my brother were talking about it, kind of how we want to do it kind of thing. I just I have no clue what to do for this, how to do it, or what's it going to be about, the name, the premise, everything like that. And then all of a sudden it just hits me while I'm sitting at my desk. And then a week later I started recording and just hitting record i bought like i already had like a microphone like a cheap little like blue snowball microphone i had a webcam mm -hmm. and um knew how to do some you know um audio recordings and stuff and then i found the early versions of riverside two and a half years ago um i started using that and you know just seeing kind of what happened and what was gonna happen next and um just doing it and having fun doing it and then and I started having guests and people reach out and uh, numbers started to grow and uh, started just, you know, expanding my horizon, talking to more people, different people, coaches, psychologists, doctors, nurses, uh, nurse practitioners and parents, podcasters, um, you know, dog trainers, people who aren't parents, um, chiropractors, just, you know, every, a bunch of different people from what to watch a life. And I'm like, man, I, this is something I really enjoy. And I always knew I was good at public speaking. I always knew that was a gift of mine. Ever since high school, I've been really comfortable behind a microphone, really comfortable in front of a crowd, really comfortable talking. Uh, despite the speech impediment, despite the stutter, despite, despite the list, and despite the, you know, how I sound and whatnot, I've always been very confident. You know, those things are, they are just what they are. Um, mm -hmm. People can get past those things, um, as long as they're not judgmental a-holes. They can mm -hmm. normally those things and really enjoy the message um despite you know the vocal tones or a lisp or a stutter or you know how things sound you know audibly kind of thing when there's a good message and so i was learning i was getting more confident i'm just like man this is just something that i just i just love doing i just really enjoy it it's been so much fun yeah. and i thought i've just been doing it since um in october of this year i expanded my horizons a little bit i kind of unniched myself and niched into other niches um, so I unniched and re-niched into more niches kind of thing by expanding from Young Dad Podcast and introducing a couple other um, um, feed expansions, if you will, onto the Young Dad Podcast it's called Patriarchy Principles to, to where I come intersect faith, politics, fatherhood, um, the spiritual side of it, the faith aspects of it, the political side of it, and have those like really important, important conversations that we just don't have at the dinner table anymore. You know, we don't talk about race, religion uh race religion gender and politics anymore we don't talk about those things they're just like taboo and they shouldn't be they should be commonplace they should become common conversation so um through that platform i really hope to restore some of that common sense into the fatherhood space and to have these common sense conversations like okay and i might get political here you may disagree may agree with me or disagree with me that's completely on you e um but you know oh my cat sorry um she's kind of like that hurt uh you know, I don't think a biological man should go in a girl's bathroom. Sorry, I have daughters. I don't want a dude in the bathroom mm -hmm. with my daughters and with my wife. You know, it's pretty obvious. I don't want my girls, unless it's like t-ball or something or coach pitch, baseball or, you know, it's a recreational kind of league or something. I don't want biological boys in my girls' sports. 
you know, that's unfair. That's an unfair advantage kind of thing. I don't want my girl to go and become a boxer and then get punched by a dude at the Olympics kind of thing. Right. And so, yeah. you know, I, those are the common sense things, right? Like I want to have those common sense conversations. I want to have those conversations on both sides of the aisle. Like, yes, I, I lean more, more one way, but I've also had a couple people on my podcast who don't lean the same way as I do. And we had two hour discussion about these things. We're so great friends after it because we're just having a discussion, we're just having a conversation through that platform. And that's the whole goal of it is just to have a normal conversation, just like we're having right now, but about specific things and things and our thoughts on these things and share those things. So that's the goal of the Patriarchy Principles podcast. Um, you know, uh, episode eight of that just came out today. And when this comes out, episode nine will have just came out as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. Episode nine is really good. It just what it just came out yesterday on Thursday. And I talked to this ran local rancher, not to my area, but local to Florida. We talked about, you know, big meat, pretty much big meat, the meat industry. And, you know, I because one video that I saw of his that really got my curiosity is you think that the tube of ground beef that you buy from the grocery store, that's just one cow, right? There could be a dozen different cows in that meat. Mm all over the, from China, from Australia, from the US, it could be multiple. If you get a pack of four steaks, you could have four different cows, steaks in there. You know, mm -hmm. and the, the way the meat looks, we talked about the coloring and, you know, the, the process of that. And we talked about how there needs to be a, like a butcher within uh, 30 minutes of every community to kind of, you know, add that competition back in to, to everything. And, you know, I've talked about finances on that podcast with a, with a veteran who's now a financial advisor. I talked to multiple veterans on that podcast as well and just getting their insights and whatnot. We talked about recovery and just some really amazing things. Um, if you could tell, I really love the Patriarchy Principles platform just because it just encompasses so many amazing topics that just aren't commonplace, that need to be commonplace. And then also my dad and I launched um, kind of a little snagging recording and, you know, getting a little, some creative uh, pitfalls there. But uh, we also launched something called the Biracial Broadcast. Myself, my dad, both biracial. Obviously, he's my dad. I'm his son. Um, he's half black, half white. I'm less than that, but I'm half white and then half, you know, um, a person of color. And, you know, surprise, surprise, if you're watching this, you're like, what? No way, you're lying. No, I'm not lying. Uh, I promise you, I was right in Oakland, California. Um, and so, legit, straight from the hood. Um, I'm not from, I'm not hood at all. I'm like the furthest thing from hood. <laughs> we launched this podcast called the Biracial Broadcast um, to, again, to talk about race discrimination and biracial identity and things like that. And, you know, people are just so lost out there. So the point of these platforms come together is that people are so lost out there today. Fathers are so lost out there today. People in general are just so lost. Everyone struggles with their identity, their gender, their who they are, what they are, why they are, why they are the way they are and stuff. And we are obsessed as a country in these things. And this is really important for being a father too. And like with having girls is to teach, to teach them their identity to who they are and where they come from. You know, one thing that I'm really going to focus on, you know, going forward that I kind of hit on a little bit, but I really want to dive into it more is this this upcoming February with my daughter. I plan to read to get as many black history books that I can from the library, even though my daughters are only one eighth African-American. It's still a really important, important part of them because a lot of her family is African-American with mm -hmm. darker skin tones than they are. Um, my youngest daughter, when her hair is all pulled back and she puts like a little headband in, swear to God. She looks like a little light skinned little light skinned little girl, like the lightest of the light skinned little girls. It's the cutest thing. Um, but I love it. Like I'm just like that's like her culture. Even my dad is like, whoa, she who is that? Um, I'm like, that's your granddaughter, dude. She's like, whoa. It's like there, there's my grandkids. There, there I see it now. Um, kind of thing. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, our, our children are so lost out there, and we have to guide them. We have to mm -hmm. teach them who they are. And we, we have to know who we are. But we can't become obsessed with these identity issues. We can't become obsessed with our, our race being our whole defining of our character. We can't become obsessed with our gender being our whole character. Like, if you're gay, great. If you're not, great. If you like dudes, great. If you like women, great. I don't, I don't give a shit who you like, who you love, whatever, right? But don't become obsessed with it to the point to where you're out protesting and rallying and you're cutting off people because they disagree with you on these issues. Like everyone's allowed to disagree and take their own stance on it and do their own research. That's the beauty of free speech and what we have in America is that we get to do those things. And so it's so important for us as fathers to make sure we, we teach our daughters their identity, but all parts of their identity, right? You know, all the parts that we can teach them, teach them about their race, their culture, 
They're teaching about your political views, teaching about the opposing political views, teach them about, you know, religion and politics and all these things that just aren't commonplace. Make your daughter so freaking knowledgeable and unstoppable in all these things. So a dude tries to pull up, talk to her about football, she can talk about football. If a dude try to pull up on her and talk about politics, she can throw him under the table. And he, he tried to teach her everything he knows when she, she already knows, she's already informed. Both sides of the aisle, she can have that conversation. She's ready to go locked and loaded kind of thing. That's our job as fathers. And so that's the, that's the premise of my podcast. And what I really try to do with the Patriarchy Principles, Biracial Broadcast, and the Young Dad Podcast as a whole is to, to put those messages out there and restore some of that common, common, sense, common sense back to the fatherhood sphere. So sorry, I got super long-winded there. Right, right. Um, no, no problem. No problem. I, I love it. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's talk about uh, another accomplishment um, that I think is, is great is that you are also an author. So talk to us a little bit about uh, your book that you wrote. Tech, yeah, no, I would love to. Uh, I'll show it right here. It's called A Baseball Game with Dad. And I, I wrote this before it was ever published. I wrote it and I sat on it for maybe a year because I was so unsure of it. If this was something I really wanted to do, pay the money to get an illustrator and whatnot. Um, and it was an absolute blessing. An old youth leader of mine, mess- I put a put a Kickstarter up there, right? If you want to donate, great. This is how much I'm trying to raise to publish this book. Here's the idea. Here's the premise. Um, if you want to read it before you, if you want to read the, the text before you donate, great. An old youth leader of mine messages me on Facebook one day. She says, hey, how are you doing with the fundraising? I'm like, oh, it's kind of slow. I think it's like 10, 15 bucks. She's like, how much do you need left? I'm like, oh, I need about 150 bucks. That moment, sent it. Absolute blessing um, for me to publish this because it was always a dream of mine to, you know, become an author sometime, to write a book and to publish a book, a kid's book specifically. And um, yeah, I went through many edits of uh, characters and whatnot, but I just, I love how it turned out just with the color, the representation in it. Um, it hits on like the aspect of being a single father or being divorced and co-parenting and what that looks like um, in real time with with kids and whatnot. So there's a lot of representation. That was one of the big goals of it was I want a child, any father who reads this with their child to pick this up and be like, oh, wait, that kind of looks like me. Or wait, you pick me up from mom's house sometimes. Or you pick me up from mom's house every week and we spend time together. Or, oh, wait, we go and do things together. And I have a lot of fun doing that too. Or that's my favorite snack. Or I love when we go and do the things. And it's based on me taking my daughters to a Tri-City Dust Devils game. Tri-City Dust Devils are the high A affiliate of the Los, Ange- Los Angeles Angels that play here in the Tri-Cities in Washington. And so we've gone to a lot of games over the years. I'm a big baseball nerd, huge baseball nerd. And so that's like where the inspiration came from. It's like me, it's like our typical day of going to a ballpark and spending that together. And, you know, the excitement of that and whatnot. And it's just really fun. And it's inspired by my time with them going to... Uh, baseball game. So it's available on Amazon. You get it for $10. I kept the cost super low. I literally make like a dollar off of it when you buy it. So I make like nothing. But it's it's just one of those things I want more. If you buy it, great. If you don't, great. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect me. And like there's no financial gain from it, right? Um, to where I, I get anything out of it or don't get anything out of it. But I just want kids and fathers to be able to have like a book that, you know, kind of relates to them, you know, and being single parent or co-parenting or having, you know, kids of color or kids that are maybe a little bit husky or I was a pretty husky kid or um, there's one picture in there that it looks like it could be two dads, maybe two. So, um, you know, those things are for interpretation, but, you know, it looks, it, those things are were important to me to capture. And I feel like I captured them all pretty well. Um, there's a dad in a wheelchair as well. So those, one of my best friends growing up was in a wheelchair. And so I wanted to make sure that was captured as well. Uh, those things that were important to me and so. stuff. I love it. I love it. And so to my listeners, uh, definitely we're going to have the, the link uh, to the book will be in the descriptions. Make sure you go and check out our descriptions because we all have great information in the descriptions um, uh, pertaining to this podcast and pertaining to, to our guests. So make sure you guys go and check that out. Uh, Jay, we're going to trans, uh, um, transfer, should I say, and that's not the word I wanted to use, but I'm going to say we're going to transfer to the next segment of our podcast and it's called the getting to the core segment and so the getting to the core segment is is based off of uh the ebook that i wrote the the core four right which is the core four values that every daughter should get from her father right and so i wrote this ebook in order to 
um, just talk about the, the core values that I thought was important as a father to pour into my daughter. Um, and did I not only just from my experience, but also from my watching my dad raise my sisters, I got five sisters, um, and, and just being in communication and community with the ladies that I was coming up in contact with. And so as a girl dad myself, I really kind of thought about what was the most important values at its core that a father would add uh, to our daughters. And so those uh, four values are guidance, affirmation, love and affection, and protection. So of those four, for you as a father, which one would you feel, do you feel is most important to you to instill in your daughters? Well, they're definitely all super important. First and foremost, like all four of those things are super important. Um, it's hard to rank them because they're all so important. They all have a different impact on our daughters, right? Mm -hmm. um, being in the mental health field and being a mental health clinician, I know how important that love and affection is just psychologically. I know how important the affirmations are psychologically on a girl. Um, I know how important it is to feel safe and feel protected um, from the psychological aspect of it. But the one that I feel like I most resonate with is the guidance, right? If you were listening to my, you know, my little soapbox there that I got on, um, the the guidance part of this is so important, right? Because kind of exactly what you see you you put here, because the father or men in general operate on facts and not feelings, and so we have to teach our daughters to be able to navigate through the BS and navigate through the BS of men, and navigate through the BS of life, because there's a lot of bad information out there. There's a lot of really bad information. The only counter to that is good information. The only counter to that, though, is being able to understand if this is good or bad information. The only counter to that, though, is being able to guide your daughters to on um, how to research and to look things up and to ask questions and to question the narrative and not get sucked into the mainstream media. Um, guide them to find their values. Guide them to learn what, learn what they stand for, why they stand for it. Teach, we have to guide them and teach them how to be unshakable in those things. Um, so then they don't get caught into the world, you know, and so those things are just so important to me as a father to to do the guidance aspect of it, because that's everything right you that you guide your daughter through all things and along the way, then comes the love and affection right as your guidance, you can guide her through different situations with love and affection, you can then guide her with affirmation reassure her, you know, help her feel help her build that confidence guide as you guide her. Right. And then the protection as well. If you're guiding her down the right path, the protection is going to be very easy. If you're mm -hmm. teaching her the right things, the protection is going to take care of itself almost. She's going to be smart. She's going to be informed. She's going to be on top of her shit. She's not going to fall for bullshit. She's not going to fall for the lies and manipulation of men. Let's be honest. We're ass, we're, we're terrible. We, we manipulate. We, we do things just to, you know, we think with the wrong head sometimes. Um, you know, especially younger men when, as they get to dating age and they get into college and whatnot, you know, men are thinking about one thing. Um, not all men, but majority, right? And so there's a very aspect of, you know, fathers with sons to be raising their sons a certain way to be able to, to do this as well. And I think we're going to see a big culture shift in this next generation um, over the next 20, 40 years. We're going to see kind of some of that common sense come back, those things come back to where it's not all about just getting in the pants and getting some. It's about, you know, okay, no, I actually want to get to know you. I want to actually learn your values. And women are going to be smart enough to, you know, cut through that BS and to understand that. Because uh, us as men, we're teaching our daughters how to do that. And so, but we're guiding them along the way to do so. So I think the guidance is definitely for me the most important. All right. All right. So the, the ebook is called uh, The Core Four, because I focus on the core four values that I thought was important. But if there could be a fifth value that you could add, what would that value be? Um, I think I would add inform. You know, I would, we have to inform our kids. We have to, have to, have to, have to, have to inform our kids. We have to ha give them information. We can't just assume that school is going to take care of it. We can't just assume that pot is somewhere along the way. No, you have to take a proactive approach here. So I would say proactively inform here, right? To where you start when they're young. You start when they're kindergarten age, maybe preschool age. You start having the age-appropriate conversations about faith and politics and gender and things like that and you start instilling those values you talk about distracted driving and mental health and these all these different things you start you know having that proactive in, information and then that conversation continues on 
as they get older and it gets a little bit deeper and a little bit more complex and you add a layer as they get older and you're proactively informing them and you're teaching them all along the way, all this information about, you know, I met kids who can't even name the last three presidents, two presidents, don't even know who the president is today. Um, and so it's like they're, our kids are just so uninformed because we just assume like school's going to take care of those things, but we can't rely on school to teach us, teach our kids those things because a lot of times they, schools are going to teach them something that we may not agree with personally. Right. And so we have to you know, make sure our, our children are well informed and they can be the voice of reason. They can be like, wait, oh, no, hold on. I'm in 10th grade. You're talking about politics and the economy. Hold, hold on. That, that's wrong. What about the whole, what about yada, yada, yada? I just watched something with my dad at home about that. And we discussed it. You know, our children are, hold on, hold on. What do you mean you're a cat? No. <laughs> what do you mean you're a cat? Are you, are you a boy or are you a girl? Like biologically, what are you kind of thing? Something I'm working on teaching my daughter is if someone tries to tell you that they're a them or a they or something like that, and that's controversial, I know, but she deserves to know if she's talking to a boy or to a girl. If she goes to the restroom at school, she deserves to only have girls in the girls' restroom at school, you know? And this thing's pretty obvious. If she sees a boy in there, she shouldn't, that shouldn't be okay. That shouldn't be just normalized, right? It's mm -hmm. not normal. It's not normal. Um, no other country in the world is that normal or trying to be normalized, except for in America, for some god-awful reason. And, you know, I know that's controversial or e, these are my opinions. They're not E's opinions unless they are. I don't know. We haven't talked about that. We'd love to have, to have them on patriarchy principles and talk about that stuff. Uh, one way or another, it would be a lot of fun. Um, but regardless, you know, we have to proactively inform our children about everything. There should be no conversation that's off the table. If you're uncomfortable talking about a conversation with your kids, get your ass on your phone right now. Go to chat GPT and start learning. Start learning. Start learning. If there's an uncomfortable conversation, if you worry about having the sex talk with your kids, if you worry about having the birth control talk, the period talk, the hormone talk, the puberty talk, the period talk with your daughters, and you're on the horizon of that in the next two to four years, you better you better start right now, dude. Right freaking now and start getting informed. If you're worried about talking to your kids about politics, get informed now. Go listen to Patriarchy Principles. Great place to start. Um, you know, if you're worried about talking to them about race and culture and things like that, because you don't really know too much about your own race and cult culture, go learn. Common theme here, right? Get proactive. Now you are reacting because you're unprepared, but react appropriately. Go and learn and get yourself informed, which is a tool and a way to protect your daughters by giving them good information, by helping them know, hey, you know, let's talk about the friends you have. Let's talk about the people you're spending time with. Let's talk about all these things. Like no conversation is off the table in my home. We'll talk about everything. Heck, I'll watch political debates on my computer, on the TV, with my kids in the room. I don't care. Like, yes, I want them to learn this stuff. They're not going to understand it the way I'm going to understand it. But if they see me getting like excited or engaged, like, and they can see I care about it, they're going to go, and their brain is going to connect like, oh, wait, that, that I cared about that. Oh, hold on. I, he cares. I'm going to care. Kind of thing. They're going to care about what you care about. They're going to mimic you. They're going to do what you do. So you have to proactively inform them about these things and teach them that just because Taylor Swift boys friends plays for the Chiefs doesn't mean you're a Chiefs fan. You're raised a Seahawks fan and you need to stay that way. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts. Sorry. Um, or I will disown you. I'm sorry. It's just how it is um, in this house. We take our Seahawks football very seriously. Um, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, playing, making jokes. Yeah. Um, but no, we have to proactively inform our children. That would be my fifth one if I could add anything here. I would feel proactively inform. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Jay, I definitely uh, appreciate you being on, man. I definitely appreciate you coming on, sharing your expertise uh, and, and also sharing your story. I definitely uh, would love to be on, on your podcast to uh, have all these discussions. Um, but I want you to have the last word, right? I want you to leave us with a word of advice, uh, inspiration, however you feel uh, for our fathers uh, and our daughters um, that may be listening. And also uh, definitely give us information for your um, your social media handles and things of that nature where we can find you. So I'll give you a couple seconds uh, to think about that. Um, to my listeners, make sure you guys go and check me out uh, at my um, website, my personal website, which is the deal, heal, fulfill.org. Again, it's deal, heal, 
fulfill.org because my mission is to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Make sure you guys go there and you can find out more about me and the things that I have going on uh, as a speaker, as a podcaster, as a workshop uh, presenter, uh, as an author, right? Because uh, we talked about the four core ebook. I have other ebooks as well. So make sure you go to dealhealfulfill.org to find more information about me and what I have going on. And also where you can book me to have me to come out as a speaker or as a workshop presenter uh, at your school or organization. Uh, also, again, we talked about the ebooks. So go to ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com where you can get your copy of the core four. We talked about it, the core four values that every daughter should receive from her father. I also have a uh, ebook called From Males to Men, which is a, um, a male mentoring book for young men that's uh, transferring into adulthood. Uh, also, there's one book that I'm very uh, passionate about called The Four Steps to Forgiving Me. Uh, no, it's called Forgiving Me, The Four Steps to Self Forgiveness. So all of those are available at ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com. Make sure you guys go there and check that out. Also, make sure you go to our Deal to Heal Tease website uh, in order to get your inspirational tea. Uh, again, that's deal the number two heal tees.com. Deal to heal tees.com. Not only do we have uh, inspirational t shirts there, but we also have our podcast merch, which is our t shirts with our podcast logos printed on them. So there's a t shirt with the Deal to Heal e Games podcast, as well as the Girl Dad Discussions podcast. So make sure you go to deal the number two heal tees.com. Deal to heal tees.com. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That is our tagline. So make sure you guys go and check us out there. Last but not least, over the last couple of years, I've been blessed to be a part of an organization called the Forgiveness Mission. And what we do, we have free virtual workshops every other month talking about everything regarding forgiveness, what it means to forgive, who forgiveness is for, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others, even the forgiveness of the world. Right, so you might you really want to check that out. It's absolutely free. Whenever you're listening to this podcast, either one just ended or there's one coming up. So you can go to forgivenessmission.com in order to register for our next free virtual workshop, or you can go to Eventbrite and look up Forgiveness Workshop sponsored by the Forgiveness Mission and sign up that way. Uh, it is absolutely free, but the information that we share, I believe, is priceless. So again, that's the Forgiveness Mission with our forgiveness uh, free virtual workshops that we hold every other month. All right. So Jay, again, I want to say thank you so very much for being on. Thank you for coming on and sharing your expertise, your thoughts and ideas. And I want you to have the last word. So the floor is yours. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate being able to talk to your listeners and uh, to be able to get on the soapbox a couple of times and to ramble and to uh, hopefully I came across and make points clear enough. Uh, so if I didn't, please reach out for more clarity of what I mean, what I said, things like that. If you want to have a spirited debate, talk about things further, feel free. Um, you can reach me on all social media platforms. Literally every single social media platform is the same. X, uh, YouTube, uh, Reddit, uh, well, maybe not Reddit, but Reddit's its own thing. Um, so X, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, Rumble, and yeah, you can find me on all the platforms at Young Dad Pod. It's that easy, at Young Dad Pod, Y-O-U-N-G-D-A-D-P-O-D. It's that easy to find me, have a conversation with me, hit me up, message me, follow me, like, follow, subscribe, all those things, you know, all, all that stuff. You can find the podcast anywhere you podcast. Uh, you can find the video podcast on Spotify, YouTube, and Rumble. Um, you can find the audio-only version everywhere else that you get your podcast. You can still get it on audio-only on Spotify as well if you choose. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of where you can find the podcast. You can also go to youngdadpod.com for everything going on with the podcast. You can find links to every episode. You can find the blog, things like that as well. Um, over there on the website. Um, and yeah, you can find different ways to support the podcast as well by going over to any of the social media platforms, the link to how you can support the podcast as well there as well. Um, and yeah, so the word I really wanted to leave here um, is first and foremost, if you're a dad, you need God. You need Jesus. You need our Savior in your life. You need him intertwined in your day-to-day -to, -day to raise your daughters. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. 
if you're missing the savior, you're missing a big part of uh, being a dad. And I'm just going to be 100% there. Uh, what I do, my podcast is not possible without God. My podcast, reaching listeners, this podcast is not possible without God. Blessing E and I with our gifts to be able to speak, to be able to talk. These gifts aren't for us. They're for you, our listeners. Um, and they're for our daughters as well. The gifts that we're blessed with are not for us. They're for someone else. And they're for our daughters as well. So keep that in mind. And the word I want to leave here with is just a couple of scriptures from James chapter 1, verse 5. Um, and <clears throat> the context here is James, uh, who is a servant of God and Christ. Um, he's talking to the 12 tribes scattered across the nation. So this is a letter to the 12 tribes scattered across the nation. Um, he's talking about trials and temptations, right? But he says in James 1, 5, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God. And I'm reading from the NIV version. So re-preface re re that. NIV version, James is talking, sending a letter up to the 12 tribes mm -hmm. across the nation. Okay, so James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding his fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything receive anything from the lord such as a person in doubt minded and unstable in all they do believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position but the rich should take pride in their humiliation which they will pass away like a wildflower for the sun rises with the scorching heat and withers the plant its blossom days its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed in the same way the rich will fade away even while they go about their business Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, the person will receive the crown of the life that the Lord has promised to those who loved him. And so what's that saying to me is, men, we are not as equipped as the women in our lives to raise and be there for our daughters emotionally and in so many different aspects. But there are some things that only you can uniquely do as a father. There's only some uniquely things that you can do as a father. I want to emphasize that for your daughters. Only you carry those keys. Only you 